Hello yogis and welcome to UNLV On Demand Yoga. I'm Kathy um, and today we're going to be working on opening hearts and hips. So opening heart um, is chest openers, really great for the shoulders, opening hips, getting some additional flexibility in those hips. As always, I'll call out modifications, but you never want to push into anything uh, that hurts. You want to get a nice stretch, but don't push your body too hard. You just want to be in a nice stretch feeling and no pain. Drink water when you need to, rest when you need to. Um, child's pose is always there for you if you need to rest sometime in this sequence. Um, and otherwise, just have fun and open up. So we're gonna start in child's pose. So knees as wide as your mat, toes touching, booties on your heels, nice straight spine, hands come in between the knees, and we're gonna walk out. Tilting that tailbone up as we walk our hands out to Superman arms, stretching the arms out until you get your forehead on the mat. For this early child's pose, I'd like your elbows up off the mat. We're not resting yet, we're still working. And in this child's pose, you might wanna rock back and forth, particularly those hips. We're gonna get into those hips today. So maybe rocking side to side, you can push in one hand and into the other hand like a cat making biscuits. Or you can just stay still and breathe. Inhale for four. Hold. Exhale, belly to spine. Get all that stale air out. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Push into your hands, curl your toes under, and exhale, come into your downward facing dog. Pedaling out your dog, pressing into one leg while bending the other knee, chest towards your thigh, tailbone tilted up, shoulder blades around your spine, gazes through your knees. And just take some small movement here. We're gonna walk our hands back to our feet and just notice when our heels hit the ground. If your hands don't touch the ground, that's fine. You can bend your knees or you can just let your hands hang. Inhale, exhale, walk your hands back out, noticing when your heels Leave the ground without judgment, just notice, and then push, put yourself back into your regular downward dog where your heels are pushing into the mat. You're not too heavy on your hands. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come high on your toes, gaze comes forward towards your hands, and tiptoe your feet to meet your hands. Again, you're bending your knees as much as you need to, but knowing that straight knees means a greater stretch in the back of the legs. Come into ragdoll, grab opposite elbows, and hang. You can sway side to side. You could sway forward and back. You can nod your head to let go of the neck a little bit. Just relax here. Really try to get your gaze through your knees so that you let go of the neck. We love to have our neck up, but really we just want to rest in this pose. Release your hands. Maybe they touch, maybe they don't. If they don't touch, bend your knees as much as you can to make them touch and then toe heel your feet together. Toes to touch, heels apart. Halfway lift, hands to shins, shoulders wrap, gaze is toward the top of your mat, tailbone is back, belly is tight. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, sweep arms all the way up, reaching. Tailbone is pushing forward, booties are tight. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins or hands to the ground. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, right foot steps forward. Left foot comes fully down, ball and heel on the mat. Blade edge of the foot is parallel to the back of the mat. Rising up, right knee straightens, coming into triangle pose. So triangle pose is both a hip and a heart opener. Your hips are facing the side of the mat. Your arms come to a T, your gaze is over that front right hand. Adjust your feet as needed. You may want more space or you may want less. Inhale, bring your shoulders up and exhale, melt them down your back to prepare for triangle. Inhale, reach forward with that right hand. Exhale, grab the shin, the calf, the ankle, big toe if you want, or you can float with your forearm directly in front of your right knee. The most important thing in this pose is to push the pelvis out. That's how you get the hip opening in this pose as well as the chest opening. Inhale, exhale. On our next breath, if you'd like to bring your hand, let your top hand behind you, grabbing your pants or your shirt, pushing the chest toward the ceiling, gaze toward the ceiling. Once again, pushing those hips forward. Inhale, exhale. If you're bound, inhale, brings that left arm up. Exhale, hands to the mat, bend that front knee. Plant the hands back to downward dog. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Well, let's do that triangle on the other side. Left foot steps forward this time, right behind your left hand. Right foot turns so that the blade edge is parallel to the back of the mat. Rising up and straightening that left leg, readjusting the stance. Hips are facing the side of the mat. Arms come to a T. Inhale, bring those shoulders up. Exhale, bring them back and down. Inhale, reach forward grabbing wherever you like. I'll demonstrate a grab on the shin this time. I like to float here because I think it opens the chest more, but you should find what's comfortable for you. Push that pelvis forward. Right arm is reaching up to the ceiling, maybe a little bit behind you, gazes up toward the right hand. Inhale, exhale. If you want to take that bind on this side, bring that right arm down, bending the elbow behind you, grabbing your shirt, your hip. Inhale, chest goes to ceiling, push the pelvis forward. Exhale. Inhale, bring that right arm up. Exhale, coming back to your T and then hands to the mat, coming back to your downward dog. Knees come to the mat, coming into child's pose. We're gonna do a dynamic child's pose to get into our hip openers. So knees as wide as the mat, booty is reaching toward those heels, hands are in front of you. But what you're gonna do here, instead of putting your forehead to the mat, is you're gonna look at the top of your mat and you're gonna rock forward as far as you can, pushing your pelvis to the mat, shoulder blades back, chest forward, gaze forward. Exhale, come back to child's pose. 
Inhale, forward, gaze forward, pelvis down, shoulders back. Exhale back. Take a couple more on your own breath. Feeling the stretch in the front of the hips. And back. And now coming into a tabletop position, taking some cats and cows as an interlude. Wrists are directly under the shoulders, knees are directly under the hips. Cow pose, inhale, belly falls, tailbone up, chest out, shoulders wrapped. Exhale, angry cat, push into the hands, pelvis tucks, chin to chest, round the back, push into the hands. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Take a few on your own breath before we move to some of the other poses. Coming into a seated posture. So your knees are bent, your legs are in front of you, and your hands are behind you. Hands can, fingers can be facing away from you or they can face towards you. It's really up to you. Towards you gives you a little bit more sort of incentive to pull the shoulders back, but you should do what's comfortable for you. And then you're just gonna rock side to side like a windshield wiper, massaging out the glutes and just getting a little bit of movement in those hips. And now bringing your feet together for butterfly pose or cobble, seated cobbler's pose. Your heels can be as close to your pelvis as you would like. Closer is an additional stretch in the inner thigh. Farther away, more of a diamond shape, a little bit easier version of the stretch. So once again, sort of get where you're going and put your hands behind you, whether the fingers are facing forward or whether they're facing the other way, it doesn't matter to me. Just really try to pull those shoulders back. And then we're gonna make it dynamic. So open and close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. And then bring both legs out in front of you. I'll go to the side for this pose so you can see. Nice straight spine, seated forward fold, hands to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, fold. Start out with chest forward, grabbing wherever you can. Maybe it's your thighs today, maybe it's your calves, maybe it's your ankles. Maybe you can grab your feet or you can take your peace sign fingers and grab your big toes. Most important thing here to start with, tailbone back, chest straight ahead. Here comes my photo bombing cat, hello. Inhale, exhale, one more inhale, and then nose to knees, make it restorative, and just rest. Even if your head is floating above your knees, that's fine. You may wanna move your hands. That's gonna, gravity is gonna help you um, sort of get deeper into the pose, even if you're not, um, you're not touching. But if it's a little bit uncomfortable, you can always take a block and put it right under your forehead and just rest that way. And let's come to a straddle. So legs nice and wide, nice flex in the feet. And just as a first step here in our straddle, we're gonna walk our hands out toward the front, just reaching down, just like we did a minute ago, but our feet were together, chest forward, tailbone back, as if someone has a string on it and is pulling 
gazes straight ahead for right now. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Make it restorative. Reach your arms out and let your chin come to your chest. Holding. You can release that hard flex in the feet. Walking the hands back. Let's come to lying on our bellies. We will take a locust pose. So that will prepare us for our bow pose. So locust, your feet are together. Your legs are nice and straight. You're on your belly. Bring your chin to the mat, looking straight ahead. And then hands come behind you, clasping your hands like you're praying or you're begging for something. And then you really want to try to wrap your shoulders around your spine for this pose. Inhale, chest comes up and those knuckles move back. It's like the knuckles are pulling you. Gaze is at the top of your mat. You don't want to torque your neck by raising your neck up in this posture. So really try to be looking down toward the top of your mat and then when you're ready those legs lift up inhale pull the knuckles back exhale inhale legs a little higher exhale release bend your knees windshield wiper your legs release that lower back And for our second locust, you can take the same hand position or you can take goalpost arms right near your um, right near your face. So your elbows are at this angle and you're just lying down that way. So they're at like 90 degree angles and you're just going to lay down on your belly, kissing the mat, chin toward the mat, elbows are down in that goalpost position, and inhale, looking toward the top of your mat, pulling the shoulder blades together, arms come up off the mat, and then when you're ready, legs come up off the mat, inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale, release, bring your hands by your sides, palms facing up, take an ear, bend your legs, and windshield wiper side to side. And for our last back bend, we're gonna take um, two half camels. So come to your knees. If you have a full camel in your practice, by all means do two full camels. Um, but I'm going to start with the modified because camel can be kind of an intense pose. So you can see I'm sort of rolling up my mat so that I have more of a cushion. I'm going to put my knees on that cushion. My knees are about hips width distance apart and I'm going to come to a standing kneel. Your toenails can be on the mat like this or you can curl your toes under. That makes it a little bit easier to do what we're going to do but totally up to you. Hands come to the small of your back. Traditional is fingertips facing upward, but you can just put your fingertips facing down towards your butt and your thumb kind of grasping your, your waist. The idea here is just to get some uh, support in your lower back. So nice straight spine, pull those shoulder blades together, and then inhale, exhale, push your pelvis forward, chest up toward the ceiling, gaze up toward the ceiling. And then if you want, raising the right hand and bringing it around to grab the left heel. If you've done that, reassert the pose by pushing the pelvis forward, making that C with your spine. Inhale, exhale, one more, inhale, 
exhale. Inhale, bring your right arm back up. Bring it to the small of your back. Release your toes and sit back on your heels. Take whatever movement you need to take or give yourself a little massage in the lower back. Again, camel is a little bit of a, an intense back bend. So just give yourself some love before we do the other side. And when you're ready, coming back to your standing kneel position, hands are positioned at the small of your back, fingers up or down, toenails are down or up if that's more comfortable for you. And we push forward, wrap the shoulders, head goes back, making a C with our bodies. And if you want, taking that left arm, reaching back for that left heel, pushing the pelvis forward again, right arm is still supporting, inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, let go of the heel if you have it. Grab your lower back with both hands, come up to your straight spine, release your toes, and sit back on your heels. Uncurl your mat if you've had it in that position. Um, to rest your knees and then we will come to lying on our backs knees to chest rocking side to side really giving some love to that lower back you can rock forward and back as well this always is like a chiropractor visit to me because I always crack when I do that and you can make circles with your knees one direction and then the other. Bring your hands down by your hips and raise your feet to the ceiling for waterfall pose. You want a nice L with your body. You don't want the feet too close to you. You don't obviously too far away. We're not doing abs today. So just a nice L. If you need support in this posture, grab behind your hamstrings. You can also put your hands underneath your butt for a little bit of support. We're gonna hold this for a good five breaths. So get somewhere where you're comfortable and then inhale, exhale. We spend so much time on our feet. It's always nice to show the feet a little bit of love. And as you're in this inversion where your feet are above your heart, notice the sensation. Are they tingling? Are they warm? Are they cold? Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, and bend your knees, bring your knees to chest, and rock side to side. And bring them back up, grabbing behind the hamstrings if you want, or back down by your side or underneath your booty. We'll just take some foot stretches here. Inhale, hard flex, toes toward your nose. Exhale, hard point. Feel the stretch in the top of the foot. Inhale, hard flex, hard point. Just really giving some love to the feet here. And the knees back to chest, grabbing the blade edges of the feet for happy baby soles of the feet toward the ceiling, rocking side to side. Mm -hmm. 
and then knees to tabletop position. We're gonna take another glute stretch here, a little hip stretch. So you can take a figure four stretch, bringing the right leg so that the ankle is directly under the left knee, and then reaching the right hand through the legs and the left hand around the other side, grabbing at the hamstring. Right elbow is pushing into the right thigh, and as you pull that left knee towards you, you push the right knee out. You should feel that in the glute. If you want something deeper, you can cross the legs over one another, so like a supine cow facing pose. The knees are right on top of each other. And grab the feet. You may have to get up off the mat to grab the feet, but try to grab them around the blade edge of the foot and pull the knees toward the chest. Once again, you should feel that in the outside here. So wherever you are, we'll hold for two breaths. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, release, knees to chest, rock side to side. Knees come back to tabletop position, left knee for the figure four, ankle is directly in front of the right knee, thread through with the hands, grabbing behind the hamstring, left elbow, now into the left thigh and that's your figure four if you want to go for the supine cow facing pose you cross your knees you squeeze your thighs together your feet are apart and you're just going to grab the outside of your feet and pull the knees towards your chest i'm going to demonstrate the figure four on this side i did the cow facing on the other so left ankle directly under right knee, clasped hands behind the right hamstring, left elbow into left thigh, pulling the right leg toward us as that left elbow pushes the left thigh away. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more pull, exhale, knees to chest, rocking side to side. Now we're going to take a spinal twist. So feet come to the ground, heels are a little bit towards your booty as if you were going to do a bridge pose, and then you're just going to rock your knees from side to side, windshield wipering. That should get you a little bit into the lower back. Also a little bit into the glute as well. And then you're just going to let the legs fall to the right. Grabbing the top of the left thigh with the right hand, left arm goes out to a T. Now, if this is plenty for you and you can play with where the knees are, you can pull them up, you can let them go down. Find that place where you get a stretch in the glute and the hip. Um, if you would like more, you can straighten that top leg. That should give you a little bit more in the glute. Or if you really want to um, stretch out that glute, you will cross the left um, knee over the right, just like we were just doing. And then if you can wrap the left foot around the right calf, like eagle legs. And then you can move that whole mashuga mess over to the right side. That's the deepest stretch in this pose. So go wherever you're gonna go. You know, sort of the most modified pose is both knee bent, both knees bent, left arm out to a T right arm on the top of that left thigh. Middle level is straight leg. More advanced is those eagle legs. So wherever you are, get there. Gaze right now is right up at the ceiling. And breathe. If you like, you can rotate the gaze 
to look at that left hand, palm down or palm up, your choice. And really give yourself an assist with that left leg and that right hand. Try to get that left shoulder closer to the mat. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Coming back through center, rock side to side, take circles, take whatever you need here before you go on to the other side. You may find that you're more flexible on one side than the other, so give it a try. Maybe on this side, you're gonna do your eagle legs. How fabulous. Just bring those eagle legs over to the left. This time your right leg is on top, your right hand is out to a T. Don't worry if your knees don't hit the mat. Again, gravity will help you here. Palm can be up or down on the right side. Just try to get that right shoulder blade down. The idea here is pulling in opposite direction. So the legs are pulling to the left as you reach out with your right hand. Gaze can go to the right hand if you wish, or it can be up at the ceiling. Three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And inhale wherever you are, bringing those knees back to your chest, rocking side to side, making circles. Whatever feels good. And maybe take one more happy baby, grabbing the blade edges of the feet. This is a nice release for the lower back. And also while we're at it, a nifty hip opener. So enjoy. And then feet come down, knees bent, preparing for Shavasana. So just let those feet stretch out, flopping open, legs are straight. Reach arms overhead and give a nice big good morning stretch. And exhale into Shavasana. Arms can go wherever you like. Down by your side, palms up or palms down. One hand on your heart, one on your belly. Make yourself comfortable here. In your Shavasana, just letting your breath be natural. If you're holding on to it or you got out of breath or you were ujjayi breathing, those deep yogi breaths, just let it go. Let your body breathe itself. And close your eyes. Open your mouth and then let your jaw go. Focusing on that area between your eyebrows, your third eye, the seat of creativity. Staying in Shavasana as long as you like. As always, it is my honor to guide you in this yoga practice. Thank you so much for letting me do that. The light in me acknowledges and honors the light in all of you. You are pure light. Namaste.